So here we got the Raspberry Pi with all the connections connected and a new groovy little button that I put on there that goes right into where the USB power supply goes in. And obviously this could be put in a more convenient way um, with a different type of shell. But this is just the way I have it temporarily right now and it seems to be working pretty well with it like this. Also got um, a keyboard and a game controller. I just use the uh, USB Super NES looking controller. Obviously your fan goes here on the second spot in on the furthest uh, furthest line of connections on the bottom there. It's not on the end, it's on the second to the end. That actually con controls the fan and it runs uh, non-stop. And then four spots down from that is where I plug the two connectors for the power supply. Um, white first, then the blue. And the power supply I got online. Um, I'll put the link down here about where I got the power button from. It's a pretty cool little gadget here. Um, and we'll go ahead and power it on and show you how it all works. When you, when you ordinarily order yourself a Raspberry Pi, as soon as you plug it in, the power kicks on instantly. And you are able to go into the options and turn it off. However, whenever you want to turn it back on again, you either have to hook it up to some kind of a switch or unhook the USB adapter and then plug it back in for the power to turn back on. The, the, the reason for getting a button is, for, I think, pretty obvious reasons, but it's a way that you don't have to keep unplugging and plugging back in the Raspberry Pi and also it's a way for you to be able to leave it in leave leave it plugged in all the time and, and use the power button as a way of controlling to turn it on so let's go ahead and turn it on it's got a really groovy little LED as well so boom there we go and the fan is on right away you can hear that And here we are. This is your main menu. Um, you do have ways of um, changing all of your options and going into your settings um, by going to the Raspberry Pi menu, RetroPie all set up. Um, this is actually a 128 gig SD card that's on this little Raspberry Pi. And it is stock, lock, drop full of different games and emulators. So. Um, there is a name for it. I will put that as well in the uh, section below for information um, And you can check that out online. It's a really really powerful powerful OS and a powerful setup that people are using for the Raspberry Pis so I'll just go through a little bit here on what we've all got Got the 2600 got a 7800 Atari Lynx it's like a Dreamcast, however I don't have any actual games on here to show off what the Dreamcast can do. Um, and then this I believe is another arcade emulator, um, sort of like Mamie. Uh, Famicom Disk System. 90 games available for that. The Sega Game Gear. Game Boy. Game Boy Advanced. Game Boy Color. Mamie, uh, multiple arcade machine emulator, which is absolutely amazing and I don't know if you guys can see really well on the screen here or not, but it actually comes with 6,000 games. I mean, there's more games that you can put on here as well, but this specific set has over 6,000 games on Mamie, so it's pretty impressive. Sorry, I'm just adjusting things. So Give me interference. Master System, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, MSX, which is really impressive. Shockingly, this N64 emulator on, uh, you know, on Raspberry Pi is really, really good. I'll, I'll maybe I'll show you that a little bit as well. Um, Neo Geo, flawless um, emulation, over 140 games on that. Uh, the NES, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, even a couple DOS games. It basically just comes with DOS Box. Of course, the absolute perfect PC Engine. Um, some ports there, I believe those are just like PC ports. Um, let me check what's in here. Yeah, oh, 
Oh, these are, okay, this isn't like PC ports, this is like programs. Uh, I don't have any experience with this at all, but Cody is one of them, and Cody is actually the newest version of XBMC. So I don't have any very good skills with Cody at all. I know there's a lot of really, really, really cool things and really cool tricks you can do with them, but with Cody. And then the PlayStation, and then we, then we come to a RetroPie itself. You can go into all the settings and managing files, themes, and stuff like that. Um, Sega 32X, Sega CD, the SG-1000, which is like those uh, Joy Card games that came out on the Master System, and the Super Nintendo. Um, Sega CD is pretty impressive. It has some really good CD games um, on it as well. Um, and the PlayStation looks great. I was playing some Final Fantasy VII on here earlier, and it, it looks perfect. So, What I wanted to show off, though, was a bit of the um, Mamie multiple arcade machine emulators, because I know a lot of people are interested in finding out more about this. I mean, 6,000 games. It's a lot of games, man. And um, this basically runs exactly like you're, you would run, run it on a PC, except for you can put it on any kind of TV you want, and also EDBD little retro pie <laughs> that costs you maybe like $65 total. Um, get yourself a keyboard hooked up to your Mamie and get a decent controller, and you can pretty much just go through and select anything you want. Um, let's go find, all right, let's go look at Japan 4 players, Ninja Turtles. Poor Mikey. A little bit of screen tearing there. But I'll honestly, like... This comes in really well. And I'm not a huge fan, necessarily, of playing on an LCD TV. But, this looks pretty good. And you can basically put it on any... any TV type that you want, with a little bit of adjustments here and there, but... Any games you want to get out of, you simply just hit escape on the keyboard, and you go to exit. And I'll show you how to turn it off. Go back, back, go to menu, go to quit, and then we'll go to um, shut down system. Really? Yes. So this is a little bit of an interesting thing here, is you still have to turn the power off. While it's shutting down, you can see that the system itself, the fan's still on, but you can see the button is thinking. And now it's off. Almost off. Yeah, now it's off. So it shuts itself off. You can tell it's off because the TV lost signal. It says no signal. So then you would come back to your Raspberry Pi and hold the power button down to shut it off. And it's off. The fan stops and everything is off. It's a pretty slick way to do it. Um, I do not have the best way of connecting. <laughs> um, this whole thing is all one piece. There was no um, work that had to be done on attaching it or anything like that, but I don't have a good way of getting my wire from all the way out here um, all the way to around there. So I wound up just sticking it in a little slot here that I had um, that, was, that came with it. So I might just put a new hole in somewhere else so I can get it around there, but it's not stressing it or anything. It's still got plenty of uh, plenty of slack on there, so it's not like it's really yanking it out or anything, but you can see um, I had it connected here, and it goes up, and then there's the fan spot there, so 
um, nothing too difficult. Very cool stuff. Um, RetroPie is pretty awesome. SD cards right there. I also have another SD card um, that's got a lot more PSP games on it. Um, I don't have any PSP games on this SD card, but on um, this guy right here, I got a whole bunch of PSP games that I could show you another time. If you are interested, just let me know in the comments below and I'll show you a video of some PSP games on it. Um, shockingly, it runs PSP really, really well. The Raspberry Pi uh, in PSP games is really, really nice. So, Anyway, uh, just more of an informational episode today, guys. I thought it was cool to share some Raspberry Pi knowledge with you guys. Um, I'm still relatively new to the whole Raspberry Pi scene, but I'm learning a little bit more and more every day, and I highly recommend it. If you're into, interested in tinkering with games or you want to play more retro games and stuff like that, um, can't do any better than Raspberry Pi. I mean, you can modify Wii's or Xboxes and stuff like that, but a Raspberry Pi is uh, a little less expensive, and it's kind of a funky little device that if uh, you have a lot of LCD TVs laying around, this is the way to go. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Bye-bye.